Um, this is Tug, True You Group, and it is our Sunday service. We are a worldwide online spiritual church group without the church building, which is great because we bring church to you when you want it and wherever you are. So we're really, really glad that you're here. And today I want to talk about something that is unlikely in many people's minds. It is peace on earth. Is it even possible? Yes, it is. It's possible. But we have to become peace ourselves. Specifically, peace is elusive in these days of worldwide unrest and unhappiness and blame game and, you know, all the politics and all the stuff going on. But we need to look for and appreciate peace wherever we can find it. You probably don't know much about this, but there have been four Nobel Prizes that have been suggested for our president for writing and negotiating four different peace agreements in the Middle East. These people have been at each other's throats for thousands of years, and you might not know it, and you may not even want to hear about it because you don't like the source, but you know, how can you say you want peace if you are willing to only accept peace in a way that comes from a mouthpiece that makes you happy? That is really not peace. The very idea of ignoring peace in any form creates a state of not being peaceful. Jeremiah 6, 4 says, they have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightingly saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. So how can we want peace in the world when we are not willing to be peaceful within ourselves? And we're gonna talk about that today. And I also want to point you I sometimes mention that we have uh, online meditations by our own Susanna Cox. They are fantastic, and she has a YouTube channel. All you have to do is go to our website, and you're watching this probably on our website, trueyougroup.com, and look for the meditations link. Click on the meditations link. Her latest one is actually on love and peace, and it's set outdoors at their beautiful uh, space in East Texas. And you will immediately be guided into a way to use your breath and your mindfulness uh, to find that peace that seems to be so elusive. Jesus is quoted in John 14, 27 as saying, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives, give I to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let your mind be fearful. So let me ask you something. Do you feel peaceful or do you feel worried most of the time? Are you watching current events or the media or things that are going on around you and seeing people being so upset with one another? And are you focusing on and creating your own day and your own experiences by what the media says or what people say to you or what you feel like you can't say and you have this uh, big space that is taken up by fear, worry, and unhappiness? Well, believe me, that's not going to get you peace. I'm reminded of children. And how Jesus said to suffer the little children and do not keep them from coming to me. Children live in the moment and they are not set up in their minds to even worry about what's going on pretty much. Unless they're in an unsafe environment. But most children, their idea of future planning is what am I going to do after school? Am I going to go to the park and play ball with my friends or whatever it is? And they are in this moment. So I'm going to bring in our own musicologist, Cindy Jordan, and she wrote and sings with her daughter when her daughter was uh, a little girl, a song on love and peace. Love and peace, love and Praying for Jesus. 
you love that? The purity of children's voices, the purity of looking for things that bring us peace and love cannot be overstated. I am reminded of Thich Nhat Hun, a Zen master, and he has this advice. He said, whatever the tasks, do them slowly with ease in mindfulness. So do not do any task with the goal of getting them over with. Resolve to each job in a relaxed way with all of your attention. Now, most of us don't do that, myself included. I am very guilty of just, you know, having a whole list of things and trying to get it all done and rushing through there and half my mind is here and half my mind is there. And believe me, that is not a peaceful way to get through my day. All of us have experienced at various times and maybe on a daily basis that we rush through life. We are trying to get too many things done. We're trying to go here to there and thinking about uh, what's next and what am I leaving out and what am I forgetting and what do I need to do and rush, rush, rush and hurry, hurry, hurry. And there is a sense of unease and unwillingness to just, as Susanna Cox will say when you check out her video on meditation, just breathe in. Breathe in today and breathe out the past. Breathe in today and breathe out the past. It's often when we get to our final destination each day, that we realize that we really haven't done the things that we want. Or if we did do the things that we wanted to get done, we did it in such a way that we did not give focus and we did not enjoy it the way we wanted to enjoy it. So what do we want? I mean, we wanna be with certain people. We want to enjoy certain things. And yet, you know, our attention is divided. And so we have to bring ourselves back into this moment. It is possible to live a simpler life with peace. And all you have to do is to pay attention. I'm going to give you a couple of, uh, of ways to do this because, you know, I am all about practical applications. I want to give you something that you can use. Otherwise, you're just sitting here going, oh, yeah, 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 she's got an idea, but whatever. So number one, I want you to first step back and take a look at what is important to you. What do you really want to be doing? Who do you really want to spend time with? And what do you want to accomplish in your work? Make a short list of four to five things for your life. Make a short list of four to five people that you want to spend time with and four to five things that you would like to accomplish during your work. And look at them and examine your commitments. Most of us just overcommit. 
where it's just like, oh, okay, well, I can do this and I can do that and I should do this and I shouldn't do that and blah, blah, blah. But we don't get around to doing the things that are important for us in our life and being with the people who we really want to be with and accomplishing the things in our work or in our job or in our life that we really want to experience. If you have too many commitments, you're not going to be able to enjoy life. So I suggest make a list of three things that you can commit to each day. And it doesn't even have to be big stuff. And then maybe have a backup plan of three other things. If you get the three things done, great. And if you're looking around for something else, have a backup plan for three more things, not 33 more things, okay? Three more things. And take it easy, but cut out the extraneous stuff and do less each day. It really is okay for you not to fill up every second of your life with this, that, this, that. Do less. Take time to breathe. Take time to walk out in nature. Take time to just be. Examine your thoughts. Am I just like a monkey? You know, like bang, 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 bang from here to there and this tree and that coconut and whatever. How about just taking it easy? It's okay. It's actually okay to have something uh, set aside a time or even a day where you do nothing. Oh my God, I could never do that. Yeah, you could. You really could. And see how it feels and see what comes up. I want you to eliminate as much as you can from any to-do list. Esther Hicks in um, Ask and Is Given, The Teachings of Abraham, gives some exercises in the back, and she calls them processes, or Abraham that uh, is the soul group that speaks through her. And she said that she was sitting at a restaurant with her husband, and she had this to-do list, and she said it was just ridiculous because she kept adding things and she would scratch one off and add 10 more things. And it was impossible for one person to do these things. And it was amusingly called things to do today. And she was overwhelmed. And Abraham said, listen, he said, take the placemat and it's called the placemat uh, process and flip it over. And I want you to look at your to-do list. Take a, a a pencil or a pen and draw a line down the middle and on the left side things I will do today okay start there and then on the right side things the universe has to do for me he said no only put down on the left side things that you absolutely intend to do today maybe it's go to the bank maybe it is make that telephone call maybe it is you know whatever it is but really only the things that you are committed to do take everything else and put it on the right side and just write it all down and turn it over to the universal mind of God she did and she felt this huge wave of relief and she said it was so amazing because immediately when they got back to their office, she found out that some of the things that she had put on her list for the universe to handle had already been taken care of. Someone that she'd been trying to call and, and reach reached out to her. Some people in her office automatically had just taken on some of the tasks and said, oh, well, we knew that this needed to be done and that needed to be done and we took care of it. So that is a great way for you to really let go of all the things that you are beating yourself up and saying, I have to do this and I have to do this and I have to do it today because that's just going to cause you a lot of guilt and a lot of, uh, a lot of pain. Be single-minded. When you are doing something, do it with awareness and do it with pleasure. Even if it's cleaning the house or cooking a meal or walking your dog, or working on a proposal for a customer. Be single-minded with it. Know that there is pleasure in this, and find the pleasure in this. Speaking of pleasurable things, eat slower. Some of us just gobble food down. And you've seen, you know, people just hunched over, shoving food in. You don't even know you've eaten, and you're so hungry. And yet, Food and feeding this precious body is a sacred act. 
It is nourishing your body and it is an act of sacredness. So smell your food, look at your food, taste your food, savor your food, enjoy it, and most of all, bless your food. I don't know if you know this, but with Curly and Photography, which actually um, photographs energy fields and auras and, and things in living things, a piece of bread that is not blessed just shows up as a piece of bread, but bread that has been blessed actually sparkles. It actually sparkles. So you're bringing up the energy. So bless your food, bless your water as you drink it. I invite you to drive slower too. Now I live in central Texas and the speed limit here is 80 miles an hour. It's because we have big wide open spaces and you would be amazed as I'm going 80 that people pass me like I'm sitting still. They have to be going 95 or 100 or more. But when you do that, you don't enjoy anything. You don't see where you're going. You are, you know, it's just a, a whole race to get where it is that you're going. So slow down, enjoy the scenery, just see God's beauty in everything, whether it is sunshiny or raining, whatever season it is, enjoy your drive. Eliminate the stress in your life as much as you can. And that comes from your mind. If you are thinking about, oh, you know, this happened and that happened and, you know, what am I going to do about that? Nothing. Just get rid of that stress as best you can and create time for solitude. Just be alone. Some people don't, don't like to be alone. They're afraid of their thoughts. But I can promise you, if you get to know yourself and if you spend some time alone, you will love and cherish that alone time. And I also want to invite you to sprinkle simple pleasures throughout your day, whether it is lighting a candle, whether it is smiling at someone, whether it is putting on your favorite clothes for that day, you know, those good shoes that you don't want to wear in case you wear them out. Just wear them. Put on the things that, that you love. Play some music. Do something that brings you a simple pleasure. It may just even be straightening up your closet because you can't find anything. But do it mindfully. Do it with gratitude. Touch everything and say, I'm so grateful that I have this and I have that and I have more than enough. And I ask you to find some inspiration. We actually do daily messages Monday through Saturday and it's posted on our YouTube channel and it's also on Facebook, and you know, True You Group, Tug. And it's two minutes that can change your life. And every day is a little bite-sized message of inspiration and laughter and fun and some upliftment and some joy. So I invite you, listen, two minutes. You got two minutes. You got two minutes. Even if you listen when you're brushing your hair or, you know, getting ready to back your car out of the driveway, you got two minutes. So find something inspiring. And also, enjoy what you have today. You know, many, many times we just have to, I was talking to someone the other day, and she said that um, her daughter gets so anxious that she practices retail therapy. You know what that means? Like being the Amazon queen and having to, uh, you know, buy something all the time to make her feel better. And yet what ends up happening is there's a shortage of money at the end of the month. Now that's not good. So how about instead of buying something, enjoy what you have and look and see if you have extra if you have too many of one thing or of, of anything, give it away. Gift it to someone. Make somebody stay. And you can really feel peaceful and good. I want to end with this uh, story about uh, a Zen sweeper. And it's been said that there are only two jobs that a Zen monk has. And one is sitting Zazen, which is meditating. And the other is sweeping or raking. And those are important tasks for them to do every day. So when a Zen Buddhist monk is not meditating, 
He is raking or he is sweeping and he is doing it with his full attention. He's not focused on anything else. He is absolutely practicing the state of sweeping as a Zen state of being. He's not thinking, oh, I got to get into a Zen thing. No, 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 no. So as he sweeps and as he cleans and as he rakes and creates beauty, he is creating that peacefulness in the here and now. In the here and now. So whenever you have housework to do or really anything to do, cleaning your desk off, cooking, walking, doing something, do it in a state of mindfulness. Do it in a state of gratitude and see what peace shows up. Again, as a reminder, go to our meditations tab and Take advantage of these beautiful meditations that Susanna Cox has put together for us. She will bring you into that state of mindfulness, of gratitude, of noticing your breath and noticing your surroundings and feeling that peace in every cell of your being. I want to leave you with a good affirmation or a mantra, if you will. And it is this. In this moment, all is well. In this moment, all is well. In this moment, all is well. And it is. In this exact moment. We're not in the past. We're not in the future. We're in this moment. I thank you for joining us for our little bite-sized Sunday services online uh, with Tug. And I like to ask, is your heart tugging you to a deeper spiritual experience? And who do you know who might want to have their heart be filled to have these messages brought to them when they want them and where they are? Because we are worldwide and we are in every time zone because you pull them up when you want. Thank you so much. I would love to hear from you. What are your experiences with Tug? What are your suggestions? What are you getting back? I'd love some feedback. And you can email us at trueyougroup at gmail.com. If you want to support this channel, you can share with everybody that you know. That is so helpful to help us grow. You can also make a donation at the donate button, or you can make a monthly donation by Patreon dot com forward slash true you group but in this moment the biggest thing that you can do is to light your own candle for peace and to pass that peaceful candle light and that peaceful way of being on to others and before you know it we can have a peaceful world but it begins with us i love you I bless you, I behold the Christ in you, and I am so grateful that you are here with us today. Go in peace, go in joy, and go in love. Thank you.